So this is the panel coverage for the T2 bacteria test, um, and it functions very similarly to the T2 Canada test as far as technology goes and turnaround times. The LODs are a little bit different than the Canada test, so they vary from one CFU per ml to eight CFUs per ml in seeded studies, um, but still you know, very, quite, quite impressive uh, limits of detection. Um, and these, rec these, rep these organisms that are covered, uh, I guess the escape organisms, represent about 70% of bloodstream pathogens bacterial bloodstream pathogens. And the thought is that once this uh, gets FDA cleared and we can put it in the clinical practice, uh, it'll allow us uh, to detect very rapidly uh, that 40% or so of organisms that require escalation or are not typically covered in a, in a usual empiric regimen. So we'll identify these early and quickly, allowing us to escalate appropriately in those situations and it provide empiric coverage or early coverage for about 95% of patients as opposed to the 60% percent that we're currently covering adequately. Um, and we've had a couple of, um, do, I have a, do I have another minute or two? Okay. We had a couple of interesting uh, observations so far um, due to, uh, as a consequence of participating in the T2 bacteria study. We had an uh, elderly male patient who was on hemodialysis. He had been in the hospital recently with, with VRE bacteremia and treated for it. He, can, he uh, finished his therapy, he came back in, uh, he developed fevers to 102 during and became hypotensive during hemodialysis. He was admitted directly through the ED. Uh, he was seen by ID prior to his antibiotics. He got two sets of blood cultures drawn, and we consented him for the T2 bacteria study at the same time. Uh, his T2 bacteria uh, assay was positive for Klebnumo. His blood cultures were negative, including terminal subcultures after five days. In our, in our opinion, this appeared to be real sepsis uh, and, and could be consistent with a gram-negative sepsis. So I think this is a case where the T2 instrument detected something that blood culture did not. Uh, in another case, a patient with Ephesium bacteremia who had two out of two sets of blood cultures that were positive and urine cultures positive that was on therapy. Uh, they repeated the blood cultures the next day when he got consented for the T2 study, uh, and the blood cultures the next day were negative, but the T2 bacteria test was positive. Um, again, this rep likely represents a true positive on the T2 and a false negative blood culture. And then finally, we had uh, an, just an interesting um, uh, case, uh, two sets of blood cultures drawn from a febrile patient with suspected bloodstream infection uh, got, that got consented over the weekend for the T2 study. We run the T2 study instrument only during weekdays. So the tech came in the next day and ran the T2 uh, bacterial assay and it was positive for Staph aureus. This was on Monday. Uh, and we went to look in the chart to see if the blood cultures were positive. They were still negative. They turned positive later in the day and grew Staph aureus. So even with you know, a, a work stream that's basically investigational in design, uh, we were still able to identify organisms, an organism from this patient earlier than the blood cultures that we were using for routine standard of care.